Um, I don't, you, you got one. I have one. I hear you one here. I'll give you one to look at. Okay. Um, so just, just so you are aware of what, like, what this meetup is and what the purpose of it is. Um, so this is, uh, it's really a skills-based curriculum um, that, you know, the, 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 the mission is really to be education driven, um, which gives peop people that, you know, have common purpose to come, a reason to come together rather than just, you know, really um, a normal networking event. So it's, the purpose is kind of gaining skills and then, you know, hopefully obviously networking happens from that, but it really is learning um, at its core. So like the check-in that you did, the idea there is um, because this thing's curriculum based, we can track progress. And so, you know, over time, the hope is that if people keep coming, we can actually say, hey, this is what you've, you know, you've, you've gained in, in knowledge and, and actually show that, um, you know, we're providing value to the people that show up, not just, you know, you, you can go to all sorts of networking events, but at the end of the day, what can you take from it? You know, you can take contacts and stuff like that, but the hope is to really provide value on, you know, a go forward basis. So that's kind of the, um, that's kind of the vision of this thing. So today, what I'm covering is um, obviously, you know, the topic is digital marketing, but the, the mindset is not, um, this is not looking at digital marketing in how do you put together a digital marketing campaign. There are YouTube videos and there are people that are really good at doing that. This is a conversation around how do you think about why you should put together a digital marketing campaign? How do you know if it's successful? Um, how should you, what type of metrics should you actually look at to judge whether or not what you did produced a outcome that you should be proud of? Um, so just off of the top of it, um, I'm assuming kind of everybody's dabbled in digital marketing in some <coughs> respect, yeah? Uh, clearly, clearly. Yeah, um, I have a flaw, does that count? You wrote the book. No. Okay, I um, I mean, it's content. I so, so content's a piece of, content absolutely is a piece of digital marketing. Okay. When I say digital marketing, um, maybe where I should start really is, um, you know, drawing, drawing a sales funnel. And really focusing right now on the, on the top of this funnel, which is really lead generation. So maybe from a lead generation standpoint, we can talk about here. So when I say lead generation in digital marketing, what like pops, what, what pops to mind? What is, what, what produces leads? Email. Email, email produces leads. Okay. What do you got, Ron? Thanks. Texts? Oh shit, this is interesting. See, I'm learning. I was just, I was, when I first saw that, I thought just contacts and discussion with people that organically kind of get you thinking about, oh, they could actually use my services. I should put them on a list somewhere. Or sure. Something like that. Sure. SEO. SEO. Okay. So it's interesting to me that nobody actually brought up social media well, I was, I was at just, all. I had my mouth full. I was just going to say Instagram, um, Facebook. I would actually like, um, so when it comes to the reason, so I would I would argue, and again, this is the format of this is is supposed to be somewhat argumentative, just to be totally uh, transparent. So the reason I would argue that that social media is top is when you when you run the math and when you address whether a camp, whether a, uh, a, a, a marketing campaign um, was successful enough. So when we, when we go down and dive into the numbers, really the, maths, the math kind of rolls back into a cost per click. It rolls back into what did it take for me to generate this lead? And clearly, clearly there are, you know, there's, there's, cost, there's cost here, there's cost to get a text, or there's cost to get the, the phone number on that text, there's cost to get that email, there's cost to get that contact, there's cost to do that CEO, or the, geez, the, the, the SEO, right? So all of these, all of these have costs associated. Um, when it comes to input on social media, the difference is, is I don't really need to know anything about you and I can market to you versus email, text, contacts, 
maybe maybe not SEO, it's a little bit different, but the rest of these things, it requires me to know you before I can actually start. So, you know, the argument here, or the way we kind of set this thing up is, is we actually group these kind of down here, and I'll explain, I'll explain, um, I'll explain how this kind of rolls rolls downward in a minute. But you know the um, anyway. So I'm going to start up here really on on a, on a lead generation, and you know so lead generation really is really is social, okay? Whether it's Facebook or whether it's Instagram or whatever, um, you know you're, you're you're targeting customers in a specific demographic that is important to your business. And the contacts that I'm targeting here, um, when I run a social media campaign, I'm targeting whatever attributes and whatever attributes I think are important or, or are part of my customer base, and that produces a cost per click number, basically. Um, there's different ways to run these things, but essentially, you know, this is really rolling down into a cost per cost per click number. Okay. And what um, you guys may have better math, better numbers than I have, but what I'm seeing is somewhere between twenty cents and a buck from a from a cost per click standpoint to actually drive somebody from here to my website. Okay, so that's about we could argue whether that's perfect or not, but so the, the goal here, the goal of, of of your your social media campaign and your lead generation is really to drive people to your website, all right? That's, that's what I'm saying is, is the, the baseline goal, all right? If, if things run as normal, if things run normal, that's kind of the expected uh, flow of, of traffic. The kind of next step down is then <coughs> email capture or some, some sort of data capture, whether I'm getting a text or whether I'm getting some other type of contact information or whatever, I'm really, Capturing the email, so that you know, a lot of times what you see is, I click on a Facebook ad, it takes me to a website. There's some form I got to fill out, and I give them my email, right? What that email does then is it feeds me into my kind of traditional uh, email marketing, some sort of recurring marketing of, um, you know, they're not my customer today, but. As long as I keep them in my funnel and I keep spinning them around here, at some point they're going to fall at the bottom and become a, become a customer. So email marketing, the goal is if you're in my funnel, at some point in the future, you will become my customer and you will, my writing's horrendous, so I'm sorry, and you will buy. All right, so that's, that's the digital marketing funnel the way I see it. And if you can go from here to here, and your customer travels through every single step, that's really the normal expectation of, of, of how a customer should flow. Now clearly, people, people jump steps and, and you may go from lead gen to buy. I'm not arguing that that doesn't happen, but that, sh that isn't the expectation. The expectation is that they go to your website and a bunch of people are gonna leave. And then from that, people, or from that segment, some people are gonna give you an email and the rest are gonna leave. And from that segment, some people are gonna buy and the rest are gonna leave. Um, so that's kind of like the, the standard process flow of actually getting, um, getting to the bottom. Quick question. Yeah. So you are just talking about now ads that you purchase on Facebook, Instagram, on social media platforms? Sure. Okay. So you're not talking about building an organic following and that's what I was wondering. Um, so... Um, it, so the, the difference is that it really relates to dollars, right? When you, if you're building an organic, if you're building organic marketing, I would actually argue that you're, you're kind of doing here and yeah. we may call it email or we may not, but it's that repetitive cycle. It's that brand building. It's like, Hey, getting information out there. So really what you're doing is you're here. Okay. 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 And you, and, and you may be like, like I said, you may be able to funnel people in here. Mm -hmm through other means. I'm not arguing that you can't do that, um, but you're not, you're not actually up here. You've, you've, right. you've said, hey, I'm gonna come down here. Um, but, yeah, does that, no, does that no, answer no, no. the yeah. question? No, I was just wondering up there, because how, if it was just organic, and how are you gonna get your followers? You 
know, that's how you're going to acquire your followers in order for them to enter your funnel. Sure. But I mean, that's why, most people, that's why most people are paying, right? Exactly. Because, yeah. because yeah. doing this takes time and money right. and you end up, yeah. I mean, this is where you start, right? It's, it's, this is the exact, exact same thing I'm doing. It's, you know, this was, this is word of mouth. And so you start, you start smaller. Now, ultimately you end up with a base that's more passionate about your product, that's more connected to your product, that probably is higher value, mm -hmm. but it's a hell of a lot harder. Yeah. Um, so most, most people are starting here paying and, and hope, hopefully it, it, it funnels down. If you can get away without doing that and you've got other revenue streams, you know, clearly it's, it's, a, it's a better way to build audience. But that's expensive to jump straight to that level oh, here. Very expensive. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. You gotta, you gotta, like if you're running a business and in your business, if you're starting from zero, and you're gonna and you're gonna start here. You gotta understand that you're not gonna make any money until this actually produces something. Versus here, you could make money. Yeah. Now I'm gonna talk about dollars and cents in a second, but yeah, absolutely. It, it's it's expensive from a time standpoint. Um, maybe not a maybe not a, a spend standpoint, but you know, times with money. So. Um, that makes sense. Um, okay, so. That's how the funnel's set up. How, how I approach, so ultimately you're moving, you're moving this way. You're moving a customer from here down here. So when we get down here, um, my, art, my, my position on moving a customer from here to the buy is if a customer hits every single level of your customer funnel, um, the expected revenue from that customer, that is, that's actually your break even. You should not expect to make money on a customer, make profit on a customer that moves from, from here to here. That's actually, that should be zero. Um, so, you know, um, I've, got, I've got a little bit of math and to be honest, um, I'm probably gonna blank on it right this minute, but we can talk about it kind of like high level. But really what you're doing, what, you're, what your analysis becomes on a per customer basis is you look at your, um, your, your uh, lifetime value of customer. So that's the expected profit of a customer over the full lifetime. So if I'm selling a t-shirt, like that, that guy, uh, you weren't there, Ron, but we, we saw a presentation of a guy with a t-shirt company. Um, because he was selling a single unit, I guess you could, there could be an expectation that, that a customer will buy multiple units, but in reality, like, you know, your lifetime value of a customer in that type of business is one t-shirt. So he's making, he was, he's making $7 in profit yeah. in, um, uh, over the lifetime of a customer. So, which means that I've got $7 to fund my funnel. All right. So, you know, if you think about the rates of what actually happens here, um, what we've found is um, moving from lead gen to email capture, the elite rate is about 6%. So 6% of customers that click will a you'll actually capture the email of. I'm not sure if that, that aligns no, with you. Kind of that's, yeah, that's what we found. So you can do the math right there on, depending on what your cost per click is, what it actually costs to capture an email. From there, for turning email from email marketing into a buy, it's about a if if you know my, my numbers are like a twenty percent open rate, pretty good. Maybe it's higher, maybe it's lower, depending on your industry and market, and like a two percent click through rate. As in to buy, like to buy, email. to buy, right? Fair, yeah, fair. Yeah, go ahead. So if you take those percentages, you really can roll up what the lifetime value. You, you, your lifetime value of your customer, you can roll up, okay, like what should I be paying per click? So what you can, like just based on the math, what you can tell here is this number needs to be pretty damn high. Like seven bucks isn't gonna cut it. Um, the important, like the, the, the real takeaway is, is what, so, like social media is no, nobody's friend. Like they don't, they don't like businesses. They're trying to destroy businesses and frankly what they're trying to do is funnel all of the profit they're trying to funnel all of the available profit out of businesses, and they have all the data to do so. They know your product, they know your competitors, they know your customer, they know what other people are willing to pay. They're elevating that cost as much as they can, 
to pull that product out. They're trying to take all that profit out of the system. That's why this number is getting higher and higher and higher. And frankly, that's why more and more businesses are turning to a, uh, a monthly recurring subscription business model. It's because lifetime value, I can now project out to five years, now I can justify my spend. So that's why things are headed that way, because I can justify putting the money in the market. So if, if you look at this and you say, okay, to run a customer all the way through that, my lifetime value is gonna be, let's just call this X, it's gonna equal X, okay? That's what my lifetime value is. Now, how you make money on this type of system is, I'm sorry, how you make money on this type of system is with my line jumpers. The people that are running from lead gen to buy, profit. People that are running from here, profit. And now, like, I can very easily conduct myself knowing that I don't need to, like, worry about who this customer is and, and why they did it or what. Like, I can just be like, is my math working out? And if so, the people that are going around my system will put cash in my pocket. Um, so that, that's really the, the assessment of, you know, how do I take, um, it's, it's kind of an incremental revenue approach. If, if your business... The tough part of this this approach is that, you know, because you're you're set you're assessing this and you're saying this number is is zero, um, what it means is I need to get a shit ton of people through my through my system to be able to afford, you know, to be able to afford to, to be able to do this. So this is a it's a mass kind of model, um, but I would this is this is where everybody's pushing to. Um, you know, incremental incremental profit and incremental revenue. Um, I think that's just what businesses are looking at nowadays, and they're not thinking. Um, you know, every pro because most products are digital. Every product takes me. The marginal cost of producing another unit is zero. So if I can make a cent on it, it's worth me producing. So because of all these digital goods, it's crashing this number and it's really causing you know, sale. Like, why am I here giving this away? Well, it's to drive sales from you know, other things. And that's what, where you know, I think businesses are, are really getting pushed. Sorry, Ed. No. I know, but you, no, no, were you gonna say anything? It's good. No, okay. okay. Take your time. Um, so that, that's, that's kind of the approach. Um, what do you what do you got? Uh, I I've got lots of thoughts. My first thought sure. is if if going through your entire funnel step by step ends up with basically zero profit, then businesses are doomed. Um because everyone's trying to go through this funnel, right? So what we should be selling to companies is a line jumping methodology as opposed to a funnel methodology. So I'll, I'll cover that in a minute, but you're right. Think products that can do this become increasingly beneficial. And the profit, where the profit should be going is to things that can do this. Yeah. 100%. <clears throat> Absolutely. What are those tools? Yeah. There's, not, there's not a whole lot of them. There's, like, most things are trying to force more shit into here. Yeah. They're actually not trying to you know, get around the system. Because when you initially started talking, I was thinking about, oh, well, I'm down there trying to get these high, like, I'm in the email stage. Sure. Right? I'm trying to like meet with people and do speaking engagements, and things, which is, like you said, very time consuming, which mm -hmm. is also very expensive. Mm -hmm. So I first started thinking, oh, I should go back up the top and do the lead gen stuff. But now I'm hearing if I do that, then I'm going to push them all the way through lead gen and my website and then get to the email and then get to the buy, which ends up making zero money. That's correct. So then... Which way should I go? I don't want to go the zero money way, the zero profit way, but the way I'm doing it will take me like a long time. So what's the answer? <laughs> um, I would argue that you fundamentally need to think about your business different. Okay. You need to understand that like if this is reality, okay. it's just like if you center yourself on this is reality, you realize it's insanity. Okay. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Okay. I'm not arguing that. Digital yeah. marketing has a place, like 100% it does. Okay. It grows brand. Yeah. Like if you can if you can slot in here, this is huge. Yeah. You skipped all this bullshit. You pulled all the cost out. So, like I'm a, I'm a digital marketing advocate. You can't like if you attack it the way everybody else does, you're screwed. You are screwed. Yeah. 
you know, every, think about everybody else starting a consulting business. They're yeah. doing the same thing. Yeah. If you do the same thing, you're screwed. Yeah. Like you're you're working for you're yeah. gonna, you're gonna undercut the guy by a dollar. Yeah. You know, or you're gonna have to work twice as hard to you know get the contact or what you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, it it is a losing game. Yeah. Um. So what do you do? Um. I think that's a, that maybe that's lesson two or something like that. Okay. I, didn't, I, didn't I, quite, I don't want to derail the whole thing. No, no, no. It's a, it's a it's a totally fair question. Yeah. Um. I'll show you a product that I'm that. One of our sponsors is, is another product that I've worked on, which is the goal is to slot here without doing, um, uh, without doing, um, why am I blanking on, without, uh, no, yeah. social media, but without is paying for it. Me? Organic. Organic, thank you. Is that, is that the Costco scan thingy where you collect some of this information? Yeah, so, sample? I mean, so this is, so this is one of the products that I've worked yeah. on. It's a, it's basically a, can't really do that thing. It's basically a QR. It's basically a, 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 Q, a digital scratcher. And yep. from it, you capture email. What it does, so that's fixed cost. So it's 50 cents, it's 50 cents a card. What it does is it allows me to slot in, slot in here. Okay, so now when, I know, I know my cost to slot in here is, is 50 cents divided by some amount of attrition that people aren't gonna use it, right? I'm gonna hand it to them and they're gonna, they're going to dump it. So I'm yeah. sure there's some sort of attrition. But what it does is it says, okay, so those things cost 50 cents. Uh, you know, I'm going to get a quarter of them because now I've handed it to somebody or whatever. Call it, even if it's 10%. Mm -hmm. um, I've taken my email capture to five bucks. So, so that's, that's the point of a product like that. Um, what it just shows is like the, the, the cost of doing, like everybody thinks running Facebook ads is, is inexpensive. It's like the most expensive marketing you can do. It's crazy how expensive it is, um, and it doesn't really produce any any viable results. Um, I know one of the uh, one of the sponsors that we got. Um, he runs a uh, an automobile incubator, and I was talking about some QR code logic and stuff like that. But when they were talking about targeting customers, they were like, "What we want to know is who owns a roof rack." Because then we can go to companies that sell roof racks for cars and target those people. It's like, well, where do you get, like, Facebook doesn't have that information. So, you know, that roof rack company today needs to target uh, millennials that snowboard. But who the hell knows if they have, um, you know, a roof rack. So there are some people that are trying to do different things to, to make, you know, this type of funnel more effective. But I just haven't seen anything come online that really allows it to be effective. It's It's... You know, you really got to take a really broad um, approach and, and, frankly, put a shit ton of money behind branding. Um, that's what you know. What moves things through this is 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 cash behind brand, um, which is also just burning money. Um, so I'm not sure if you know, that's going to be a, a good outcome for you either. But um, so this I know, that didn't, I know that didn't answer your question. At it, all, it's but. it's not it it does in a way because. What, I was, what my mind is going is, so this funnel just basically doesn't work. You're you're basically saying this funnel will not make you money. Look, this this funnel will not make you money. However, it, like if if you take the approach that okay, I'm going to do this at cost neutral. Well, how long am I going to do it at cost neutral? Because once I've captured those customers and I and I cut this off, well now they can be profitable. Assuming that they become repeat customers. Assuming they assume they become repeat customers, and you know, at what point does my brand get big enough so that I don't have to do any of this anymore, and I can do this? Got it. So the goal okay, would be so, to have it run long enough to the point where you can cut off those couple of top. Right now, how long is that? When you get the, you know, when you hit that point, that's that's really business dependent and kind of hard to answer. But, um, you know, that's that's the goal in this stuff in my head. I don't know, Ron. Like, uh, like, do you have do you ever have people that? Oh, yeah, of course I have. So what is common businesses and even business owners is like, when you ask them, okay, what is the lifetime value of your customers? They don't have an answer. Sure. They don't. I can tell you for the industry that I have worked, let's say uh, general dentistry. Lifetime value of a general dentistry is $2,000. That's the lifetime in a five years. So every phone call that they miss is $2,000. That's how important, how important for them to pick up that phone. So it is two thousand dollars, right? You can invest in social media if you bring tweets, 
really, it's worth it. So it depends the product you sell, it depends what you do. If you run a t-shirt company, of course, $7, $8, you are going to make zero profit. So it depends the level of your product. Depends well, what's, you know, with a, with a business like, like a dentist, it's every six months. You, it, it's not a, there is recurring revenue. The business model is recurring. Um, um, right, so I mean that may be something too. If you if you want to kick this number up, um, you know maybe maybe you don't want to operate at zero. Maybe you're going to try to operate a, a float it a little bit. Okay, mm -hmm. like this is a this is a clearly in a like utopian world, right? Um, so maybe you don't want to operate at zero. Maybe you want to kick it up, but like figure out how to get into a recurring model if this is the w the way you want to run it. Because yeah. otherwise, you can't answer the question of what is my lifetime value. Yeah, that's it's a super hard, hard question for business owners. Right? Sure. That's the tough one. <laughs> Can I make an observation? Yeah. So I feel like, Matt, what you brought to light is, it's not just, I feel like we were kind of like brainwashed. Facebook is the only way to advertise. And you're showing different ways. Does that make sense? Where I feel like a lot of people <laughs> um, kind of got caught up in that. I think advertising, like one of the reasons I'm not, one of the reasons I'm not advertising my products on Facebook is I think it's a losing game. That said, like, these digital platforms are almost the only place to advertise. No, you know, why are, people aren't advertising on TV anymore. People aren't doing print. It may, you know, uh, I know like Bumble is doing a, Bumble like the app, they're coming out with like a print magazine. Um, super weird, is it gonna work? Who knows? Um, I, I don't know. Um, I, I would say realtors, because I recently, I'm in a business group and there are a lot of them there, and they actually heavily rely on print still. And apparently, that works for them to some extent. Yeah. So it just I think it just depends on the industry maybe that certain industries will gravitate toward one way of marketing sure. versus others. So yeah. and that was interesting because I just throw those things away. But <laughs> I still don't know how the industry makes money. The, the, yeah, I I, 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 I can't I just give you a quick example, like also yeah. tell us. I work with veterinarians, so let's say for them, like uh, Facebook for them doesn't make any sense, they cannot make any money. Right? So for them, what it makes sense is Yelp. Mm -hmm. So every industry, what you say, has their own thing, mm -hmm. own niche. So Yelp, when they make the run Yelp ads, they make money. They bring customers and other stuff. So I, I, would, I would even argue Yelp though, Yelp follows the same model. Yeah. It's the same, Yelp, you know, Yelp, Yelp knows who their customer is, they're yanking their, their ads are, are more expensive because they know that they're this is what you're trying to get go after and you know it's like LinkedIn LinkedIn ads are more expensive than Facebook ads because it's more targeted um, that's interesting that they realtors think of the printouts of yeah, the, yeah, the things they're doing yeah. I, I throw them out too I don't even yeah. when I'm looking for a house I don't even look at that I just go online and just browse the houses sure but I mean they put it on my door so many times I mm -hmm. start to know their name you know, oh, and interesting. So, I guess that you're going to see the same face over and over again. So, my friend I don't need to buy or sell, but if I did yeah. and I didn't know anybody else, chances are I would. No, and, yeah. and real estate works very funny the way they work. Because yeah. let's say once you work with someone in real estate, this person is so good for you that you trust him for life. When you're going to go for your like second that. house, for sure you're going with the yeah, same time. That's for sure. You're not going to look for a new one. Yeah. <laughs> so the lifetime value of them is yeah. forever almost. Sure. Um, so I guess just, uh, I'll, I'm gonna try to end this. Um, I think the, the takeaway on a lot of this stuff is like, to, you gotta figure this out. In order to figure, you can figure that out without spending any money. You can basically run like mock campaigns, stuff like that. Um, and you guys, this, you guys know all this, but um, <laughs> so, um, I don't know any of this. <laughs> yeah, I don't um, so you, you, like really, that. really testing, testing out your assumption on who's my target market, what's the cost. It's like the easiest place to start. You don't even need to run a can. You don't need to know if. You don't need to test. Is it my target market? Test if if the financials work. If the financials work, it's not your target market. <laughs> like, um, so you can kind of start down that road without spending any dollars. And then really the key, the key on this stuff is like, go small. It's like, it's so, it's so easy to put a hundred dollars behind a campaign and, and, you know, waste a hundred dollars and not learn a damn thing. 
the verse is really, really starting small. And knowing that you're not going to, it's you're not going to run a campaign and, and blow up, but you're really just looking for okay, like what produced a little better result. And until you feel really confident to put dollars behind it, don't do it, because they're just going to take your money and you, you don't even know. You know, when you run a when you run a campaign, they tell you what happens, but like. I didn't see anything move. Like, how do you how do you actually know anything happened? There's no yeah. real knowledge transfer um, in a failed campaign, mm -hmm. um, other than it failed. Um, so that's that's kind of it. <laughs> so just so you, now I'm gonna run through uh, some sponsors. So obviously this beautiful space, Crash Labs. If you guys want to work here, I'm not. Jason's yeah, not here right now, but. Yeah. Um, these guys, Traction Labs, they gave me pizza and beer. Um, so if you want to take any with you, you are more than welcome. <laughs> um, but if you do, if you also know anybody, I've never heard of a, I don't know many automotive incubators, but they just started and they're out of the Cove area. So if you don't do know anybody that's automotive or like paint related or like tangentially related to the automotive industry, um, let me know because these guys are. Um, yeah, they're actually in the process of raising a fund to, to start looking at some of these companies, so they're interested. Um, and then Pop Roulette, uh, that's our other sponsor. But again, the purpose of there is to, is to jump um, in a different way, not to go from lead gen to buy, but to go from nothing to, to email um, and to skip this process. So, so really the competitor for this product is Facebook. Um, and we think we generate, um, we think we generate leads for Less than fifty percent of the cost of Facebook. I'm not really sure because I don't have enough data, but that's kind of a process. As far as upcoming stuff, so we partnered with the, the Costa Mesa Chamber um, next week. So we're doing sort of the same thing next week. I think it'll be a little bit more, probably a little broader, and talk more a little bit about some tool set since I think it'll be a little less knowledgeable business um, owners. But kind of the same type of thing next week, and then. The following week, we're kind of doing version or lesson two of this. It's okay, now you know the basics of how to think about a campaign, like how do you identify who your target market is and really you know, lean into that. So it's kind of digital marketing lesson two uh, on the 21st. What else do I got? Oh, yeah. We're also trying to push some private lessons. Uh, no pressure. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we, um, the, the goal here is to, the business model really is, um, you know, to try to, um, farm ourselves out to, to help answer some of these, some of these questions, uh, for business owners. Okay. I know that was supposed to be you, Linda. Yeah, no, 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 that's okay. That's great.